Hey everyone, it's Sophie from Build Your Jungle and today I'm going to be talking about a topic which I don't think is talked about that often on social media and it is plants that no longer bring us joy. I feel like on social media people are often talking about the perfectionist level of plant care and they're portraying their collection as perfect all the time and in reality that's just not the case and it makes people feel bad. So today I am here to tell you that people, it is it is normal to get fed up of plants and have different periods of neglecting certain plants and stuff. Life happens. No one's collection looks perfect. Mine certainly does not. If you're not new to this channel, you may have noticed by now that I love to normalise talking about the realistic side of houseplant care and houseplant disasters, all that kind of thing that we all experience in our plant care journey. So today, here are 10 plants in my collection which I regret buying. And I'm sure there would have been a few more for this list that are no longer with us, God rest their souls. I usually like to do counting down from 10 in reverse order, but we're shaking things up today. We're doing numerological order. Why? No reason. At number one, we have Calumco Tomentosa. And I forgot it had this little hitchhiker on here. Because if you might know already, I collect frogs. And this is one that someone got for me. He's got a funny little face. I like it. This is a succulent with a furry texture and it gets these kind of orange tips. It was a lot more bushy, it like condensed and shorter when I first got this, but I have taken multiple propagations of it. Just something about it, it became leggy, I don't know. The thing is, I honestly did not become disappointed in this plant until I had a Cotyledon tomentosa, which is the bare paw succulent, because that one is looking fabulous and full and just living her best life. And then I look at this leggy and it frustrates me. For care, I will say that this lives in the living room, which is the lowest level of light room in our house, which has definitely contributed to the legginess. I also often let living room plants dry out too much between waterings because I forget about them when I'm not spending all my time with them. When I sat down and thought about what plants I was gonna talk about today, this one I was like, instantly knew it was going to go on this list because it just annoys me so much. Uh, I definitely could try moving it to a brighter spot. There is a second ridiculous side note reason why it annoys me and it's because I bought this when I was on a date with someone plant shopping and it did not work out with that person. This was like a long time ago and every time I look at it it makes me think of the things about that person that irritate me. <laughs> so that's the reason why I don't like this plant. Coming in at number two, we have Philodendron brantianum, and this isn't all I have of this plant. I'll put a clip up here. And it's in this adorable little container, this jar that I got that's hand painted from the charity or thrift shop. And I've got some clippings in here trying to start them again. I don't even think they've started to form roots yet. And it is not this plant as a whole that I regret buying. It's this specific plant that I own. Like I actually like the species Brantianum, but I just don't like how mine's grown for me, how it's turned out. It's basically been disaster after disaster. Anything that could have gone wrong with this plant happened. It had thrips twice, got really leggy. I didn't put it on a support. It started roller coastering the stem all around this weird stick that I temporarily put there. I lost loads of leaves. It's not been the best so what I would really love for this plant is a full pot on a support early on to get some big sized up leaves. So I'm gonna try again and if not honestly this will probably be my last try with this plant I'm a bit sick of it now. But whenever I consider not having this plant anymore. I just look at the blister variegation or this beautiful silver and we know I love silver plants so I think I'm gonna have a hard time letting go of it. I just lent on the dishwasher. I am gonna try again and probably give it more chance. I mean let's be honest you have had far more chances than you deserve. At number three it's a plant which I bought on a whim whilst working one day at a plant place 
and it's this philodendron mandeanum and i think one of the reasons i regret buying this plant is because i was never that invested in it in the first place ridiculously i was just looking around work like where i need something tall and cheap to go on floor standing in this area in my room i've since got this ficus which i much prefer there and is really nice uh, but this just kind of doesn't even live there anymore ironically it lives on my sideboard with some of my anthurium this plant really just makes me want to go yeah you know it's that kind of yeah that's that's how i feel about it obviously it has these really nice big leaves and which are a very nice color but it's a bit boring compared to other stuff especially when there's stuff like my philodendron campylinet which we know i love her the stems were quite dark red i feel like it fades a bit over time and the new growth is the darkest red point but also i think it was the negative care journey that i went on with this plant that made me dislike it a lot the day that i brought it home from my old work i didn't even wrap it up in anything it was a really cold night i just carried it back and it probably damaged a lot of the leaves and when i brought it back it had a really long period of adjusting and transitioning it lost a lot of leaves i think from cold damage that night and then it just had a really weird time adjusting to the conditions in my room i found this pest on it that i've never seen on any other plant before and it was like a leaf cutter beetle i think it was a leaf cutter beetle and there were some of them in the petioles but it was easy to treat because it was like a once and done situation but then because it's just got this huge bare stem here it's just kind of not the best i put it at the back behind stuff it adds some foliage to the area but you know i could really do with having multiple propagations of this maybe just starting the whole thing over again and also it's put out this pup in here and i really want to grow that out separately because i'm thinking that maybe if i grow it from small it will make me become more attached to this plant and just see if that makes any difference because i think i really just have a grudge with this specific plant but it was 15 pounds and then i had an additional 20 percent off so i still don't think that was bad for this size of a plant i just don't like you that much anymore sorry at number four we have one of the notorious problem children and it is Hoya Rosita, just going to get this out of the prop box made me annoyed. <laughs> I got this as part of a Hoya bundle on a Facebook plant group like three years ago and can I just show you how lovely my Hoya Bella looks and that was a tiny little clipping to start with but this one has never grown anything except this vine. What I don't understand is that it lives in a prop box with really high humidity, great light, everything else in there does amazingly, but this plant is just unable to grow a root system. At first I had a similar problem with a couple of other species of Hoya and sphagnum moss just rehabbed the roots amazingly, but this one it's just never grown more roots. Every time I check on it I'm like what is going on? And then it's throughout this vine but obviously it's got no leaves because it's got no blooming roots what are you doing and it's a shame because i really like the texture of the leaves and the little speckles it's very nice but when i checked on the roots of this in a video before one of you guys told me to try perlite so and i said i was gonna stick with sphagnum first and then if it didn't work i'd try the perlite so i'm gonna try the perlite and it's your last chance quite frankly at number five, I think this is going to surprise you. It is, hang on, my philodendron narrow escape. And I know, I know, but just hear me out, hear me out. When I first bought this plant, I bought it with the intention of it being a statement plant for our living room, which is still where it lives, but it annoys everybody because it's so wide like it's a crawling philodendron even though i'm saying it's a crawling philodendron i know this vine's climbing but i think it's because i'd chopped the stem back a few times to try and trigger new growth and then it's just decided to grow upwards as you can see it has put out some new leaves as well this one 
uh, got attacked by a remote control helicopter after a test flying disaster. If you haven't clocked it, this is the unvariegated version of Risen Fire basically. And the leaves are very sculptural and I wanted this plant for a while. I saw this on uh, Instagram, I think, from someone local from Matt Monster for like £35. I thought it was great. <laughs> Did that just hit my teeth? Uh, 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 oh god, right. My housemates want me to move out the living room. It's too big for my bedroom unless I do some major reconfiguration. But that's not even my biggest beef with it. My biggest beef with it is it's in semi-hydro, it's in hydro -lecker. And I do not like growing philodendrons and tropical plants in hydrolecker because the roots grow even faster and it's so hard to keep up with. When they're in really big pots, it becomes heavy. It's hard to be carrying them all up and down stairs to properly flush the lecker. Because when you use lecker, you have to flush it through. It has some whole other shebang. But my point is this plant's got root rot multiple times and I've tried to transition it to soil instead and it just wasn't having it. So it's still in Lekka and it just kind of stays more like a sculpture than a plant. I do still love this species. I just wish I'd gone for one that was a bit smaller because this is size of my arm. <laughs> Next we have a type of snake plant and it is Sansevieria cylindrica and this was actually in I think the first 20 house plants that I bought and as I've just got more into stuff like my tastes have changed with the kinds of plants that I like and there's just something about this one that I really dislike and I find it weird because I love succulents, I love cacti and it's so similar to Sansevieria Mikado which I absolutely love but that one's really thin and I just don't like it. I just don't like it. Another reason is because it collects dust like nobody's business. It's covered in dust right now and it never grows. It's never grown a thing for me. The root system is very shallow I don't know if there's ever an instance where people have these plants and it's all kind of grown from the same plant initially like this mother-in-law's tongue or are they always all individual propagations because that is what I hate about you because they just get knocked out of the pot they get knocked over it gets all pushed looking weird I mean if I turn this sideways that's weird this lives in the living room and it's a good plant to live in there because it can deal with uh, the lower light because it doesn't really get bright light in there. And for its purpose, like it made sense. It's easy care, but it's just, I don't think this plant, oh, sorry, I should probably wait till I've stopped itching my neck. I just don't think any of us really like this plant anymore, to be honest. Maybe it's like a flower arrangement and I just need to like, no, no, it's not. It's not like a flower arrangement. Number seven is Peperomia angulata and it's not helping its case right now that it is just blooming, trying to bloom so much because I hate Peperomia inflorescences. They are just boring load of nothing and they stop your leaves from growing because they're putting all the energy into the blooming and we are not about this life. Now I'm gonna have to pick your off. Oh, this one's done three on one vine. How generous. I absolutely love this pot. This is a handmade jessamite pot and I bought this pot specifically wanting it for our living room because it is lovely and this plant should thank its lucky stars that it got this pot because the fact that it's in here means that I remember to take care of it. However, I'm not thrilled with it as a whole. <laughs> I think at the time I quite liked the pattern of the leaves, it kind of reminds me of a Hoya, but I just don't like how it grows. With this plant it shoots out the vines for ages and then will eventually give you the leaves. Like you can see on this vine it's put out these two first but now it's getting a baby leaf here which is just weird. 
and I don't have the patience a lot of the time with peperomia and I end up chopping them back but I force myself not to be chopping the vines off and to just let it grow and see if that changes my opinion of it and really that's only a minor grievance because again when I actually think about it uh, I don't like this plant because I went for a job interview and they told me that I'd got the job and I went and I bought this plant as a little memento, my tummy just rumbled, and then they corporate ghosted me, so that kind of sucked and now I look at this plant and it kind of reminds me of that a little bit and sometimes makes me a little bit like, hmm. So if anyone takes anything from this, I think it's don't buy anything from your house on the day of a job interview. <laughs> Oh, and I don't think I said that uh, Jason, who is lovely, who I know through markets and stuff from Aether and Knox, uh, made this pot. Not sponsored, just supporting a local business. I think this one is going to be another one that surprises everybody. It's my <laughs> Plectranthus australis, which was in my fastest growing houseplants video. And it's because it was in that video that it is in this video. Because the amount of plants I have made from this, I've chopped it so much. I've grown so many of them. I've sold so many of them. I've given them to every planty person I know. I've even given them to people I know that aren't planty in hopes that they'll take it off my hands because it never stops. And I think the key mistake I've made here is that I saw uh, the bearded plantaholics plant of this and I really liked how it was growing trailing. That was a lot smaller than this. Um, when it gets like this, it's really taking up a lot of space. I can't put things next to it on any side. You can see how this was the main vine and I chopped it and it just keeps going and going and going, throws out all these aerials and there's just more and more branches of it coming and it is overwhelming. I think overwhelming even to itself because it seems to have a habit of growing so much more foliage than it can even keep up with watering of. Like even if I water this, you know, every day it still dries out, like it doesn't matter how many times I repot it, whatever, it's just like boom, grown huge again. It's like a weed and it's variegated somewhere. I don't like how crazy it looks, but it's just a bit sad that it, I can't deal with it taking up this much room. So I'm going to prop the whole thing, yeah, the whole thing, and I'm gonna grow it climbing, how I should have done in the first place. It's also known as Great Ivy, so it likes to climb, but I just liked this look, and I do like this look still, but yeah, I'm gonna do it all climbing and start it again, and hopefully that will allow me to keep winding it round and round and round, and it can just stay compact and vertical because I'm really starting to think this year about how I can optimize the space in my room when it's a literal jungle. At number nine we have a plant I regularly forget I own and it's Philodendron Atom and it looks really bad right now. Not great, not great at all. You can see it's got lots of tiny little leaves down there because it basically never gets fertilized and the thing about this plant and the next plant I'm going to show you is that where they live in the bathroom, anytime I treat a plant with something, they are in the firing line. I never move them out of the way, so they've been over chemicaled and stuff, uh, and then also just neglected, dried out a bit too much. Not the best light. And also this one's had thrips multiple times. I actually got this when I was getting in a load of plant stock years ago and to sell. Uh, and this one had thrips. So obviously I held it back uh, to treat and isolate and I did not sell it. Uh, and it just, I kind of neglected it a bit after that. I thought it looked naff, not good enough really. And I thought it would grow back, but because of it's not amazing care by me. It's just kind of remained in this kind of meh phase. And at the time, uh, people quite liked these because they were a bit more unusual. But now I just think it kind of looks like a cabbage. But I've not seen what it looks like bigger. I'll put it on the screen now. I would love to just put it somewhere with bright light and see if, and humidity, high humidity, and see if I can get it going again. But I don't know. I'm not very invested. I regret adding you and you bringing thrips into my life. At number 10, and this is the plant, the other plant that I instantly thought of when I thought about this video. It's Syngonium Neon Robusta. 
And I have to say, I found it so disheartening when the other day, when I reposted my 30 plants in 30 seconds reel on TikTok, I noticed that it used to look like this. How this used to be that is beyond me. I mean, what is even happening there? I don't even know what's happening there. It's had thrips again at multiple times in the firing line of spray, dried out too much, but it seems to just be, it's still growing there. It's putting out a new leaf there. What's really weird though is to say that the humidity goes up quite a lot in the bathroom every time that we're all showering every day. Like, it amazes me how long it takes for the leaves to unfurl. It's also lost its colour with the lower light. It's become this kind of browny, dirgy green. And I miss the pink and the fullness. I think I'm going to prop the nice bit. <laughs> nice. Nice being a very loosely used term here. Um, but I'll prop bits of it. I think I'd start it again because I don't want to look at this anymore. Nice little plant event there. So anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing me talk about some plants I regret buying. Please let me know in the comments down below. What plants do you regret buying? I would love to know. At the moment, I'm posting long form content on Friday, so please do hit that button, subscribe to be notified when I next make a planty video. I post every day on TikTok and quite a bit on Instagram as well. There's all kinds of funky business on there, so head on over if you wanna check that out. And if you'd like to buy some illustrated houseplant and botanical products, then please do head over to my website. It's buildyourjungle.com. There's a fly coming to warm me. And I hope you're having a great day thinking about houseplants. My guinea pig made a noise.